Christmas Weather in Scotland by David Gray A winter day, the feather-silent snow thickens the air with strange delight and lays a fairy carpet on the barren lea. No sun, yet all around that inward light which is in purity a soft moonshine, the silvery dimness of a happy dream. How beautiful, afar on moorland ways, bosomed by mountains, darkened by huge glens, where the lone altar raised by druid hands stands like a mournful phantom. Hidden clouds let fall soft beauty, till each green fir branch is plumed and tasseled, till each heather stalk is delicately fringed. The sycamores, through all their mystical entanglement of boughs, are draped with silver, all the green of sweet leaves playing with the subtle air in dainty murmuring. The obstinate drone of limber bees that in the monk's hood bells house diligent. The imperishable glow of summer sunshine never more confessed the harmony of nature, the divine, diffusive spirit of the beautiful. Out in the snowy dimness, half revealed like ghosts in glimpsing moonlight, wildly run the children in bewildering delight. There is a living glory in the air, a glory in the hushed air, in the soul a palpitating wonder hushed in awe. Softly, with delicate softness, as the light quickens in the undawned east, and silently, with definite silence, as the stealing dawn dapples the floating clouds, slow fall, slow fall, with indecisive motion eddying down the white-winged flakes, calm as the sleep of sound, dim as a dream, the silver-misted air shines with mild radiance, as when through a cloud of semi-lucent vapor shines the moon. I saw last evening, when the ruddy sun, enlarged and strange, sank low and visibly, spreading fierce orange o'er the west, a scene of winter in his milder mood, green fields which no kind cropped lay damp, and naked trees through skeleton shadows, hedges thickly grown twined into compact firmness, with no leaves trembled in jeweled fretwork as the sun to luster touched the tremulous water-drops alone nor whistling as his fellows do in fabled poem and provincial song the ploughboy shouted to his reeking train and at the clamour from a neighbouring field arose with whir of wings a flock of rooks more clamorous and through the frosted air Blown wildly here and there without a law, they flew low, grumbling out loquacious croaks. Red sunset brightened all things, streams ran red yet coldly, and before the unwholesome east, searching the bones and breathing ice, blew down the hill with a dry whistle. By the fire in chamber twilight rested I at home. But now what revelation of fair change! O giver of the seasons and the days, creator of all elements, pale mists, invisible great winds, and exact frost, how shall I speak the wonder of thy snow? What though we know its essence and its birth, can quick expound, in philosophic wise, the how and whence, and manner of its fall, yet, O oh, the inner beauty and the life, the life that is in snow! the virgin soft and utter purity of the downflake, falling upon its fellow with no sound. Unblown by vulgar winds, innumerous flakes fall gently with the gentlest of love. The earth is cherished, for beneath the soft, pure uniformity is gently born warmth and rich mildness, fitting the dead roots for the resuscitation of the spring. Now while I write, the wonder clothes the veil, calmed every wind, and loaded every grove, and looking through the implicated boughs, I see a gleaming radiance, sparkling snow, refined by morning-footed frost so still, mantles each bough, and such a windless hush breathes through the air, it seems the fairy glen about some phantom palace, pale abode of fabled sleeping beauty. 
Songless birds flit restlessly about the breathless wood, waiting the sudden breaking of the charm, and as they quickly spring on nimble wing from the white twig, a sparkling shower falls, star-like. It is not whiteness, but a clear outshining of all purity, which takes the winking eyes with such a silvery gleam. No sunshine, and the sky is all one cloud. The veil seems lonely, ghost-like, while aloud the housewife's voice is heard with doubled sound. I have not words to speak the perfect show, the ravishment of beauty, the delight of silent purity, the sanctity of inspiration which o'erflows the world, making it breathless with divinity. So thus with fair dilaption softly falls the sacred shower, and when the shortened day dejected dies in the low streaky west, the rising moon displays a cold blue night, and keen as steel the east wind sprinkles ice. Thicker than bees about the waxing moon gather the punctual stars. Huge whitened hills rise glimmering to the blue verge of the night, ghost-like, and striped with narrow glens of firs, black-waving, solemn. Or the luggy stream gathers a veiny film of ice and creeps with elfin feet round each stone and reed, working fine masonry, while o'er the dam, dashing, a noise of waters fills the clear and nitrous air. All the dark wintry hours, sharply the winds from the white level moors, keen whistle. Timorous in his homely bed, the schoolboy listens, fearful lest gaunt wolves or beasts, whose uncouth forms and ancient books he has beheld, at creaking shutters pull, howling. And when at last the languid dawn in wind redness reillumes the east with ineffectual fire, an intense blue, severely vivid o'er the snowy hills, gleams chill, while hazy, half-transparent clouds slow range the freezing ether of the west. Along the woods the keenly vehement blasts wail, and disrobe the mantled boughs, and fling a snow-dust everywhere. Thus wears the day, while Grandfather, over the well-watched fire, hangs cowering with a cold drop at his nose. Now underneath the ice the luggy growls, and to the polished smoothness curlers come rudely ambitious. Then for happy hours the clinking stones are slid from weary hands, and barleycorn, best wine for surly airs, bites in the mouth, and ancient jokes are cracked, and oh, the journey homeward, when the sun, low rounding to the west, in ruddy glow sinks large, and all the amber-skirted clouds, his flaming retinue with darkening glow, diverge. The broom is brandished as the sign of conquest, and impetuously they boast of how this shot was played, with what a bend peculiar, the perfection of all art, that stone came rolling grandly to the tee, with victory crowned, and flinging wide the rest in lordly crash. Within the village inn they by the roaring chimney sit, and quaff the beaded yesqueba with sugar dashed. Oh, when the precious liquid fires the brain to joy, and every heart beats fast with mirth and ancient fellowship, what nervy grasps of horny hands or tables of rough oak! What singing of lang syne till teardrops shine, and friendships brighten as the evening wanes. End of Christmas Weather in Scotland by David Gray.